Top two teams in the SEC, second-ranked Alabama visiting number 24, Texas A&M. As seen on CBS, the Aggies trying to do something this program has never done before, and that's beat an AP top three-ranked team. And the Crimson Tide certainly didn't look like a number one seed in Jerry Palm's bracketology. That was before the game, and Alabama scored 22 points in the first half. That's right, 22 for the whole team in the half. They shot 21% from the field, two for 19 from three. They turned it over 10 times, but they were only down 10 at the break. So you figured the second ranked team in the nation is going to come back and come back. They did. Here they are down 10. Brandon Miller up the floor and finishes with the finger roll. It's an eight point game. Minute later, same score. Javon Quinterly to Nick Pringle. And it's a six point game. Nine minutes to play. Alabama down five. Uh, make it two after the Miller three. Minute later, still down two. Miller driving off glass. We are tied. Now under five to go, tied at 51. Javon Quinterly, open three. First lead of the game for the Crimson Tide. After a timeout, Aggies respond. Wade Taylor, around the screen, dropping a tray. AM ties it up at 54. Taylor at a career high, 28. Now two minutes to go. Alabama up two after taking the lead. Quinterly misses the three. Ball's loose. Miller called for the foul, and that is it. Brandon Miller fouls out with just under two minutes left. AM would hit two more free throws to go up by four. Now 40 seconds to play. Off the miss three. Bama down two. Mark Sears, the rebound, throws it right to Anderson Garcia. Aggies get the ball. There's fouls. AM seals it at the free throw line. And AM wins it. 67 61. Storm that court. AM's first win all time against an AP top three team. They have been 0 and 27. Previously, Alabama's the highest ranked team AM has ever beaten after the game. Jay Wright caught up with Buzz Williams. Coach, saw you hug your wife, man. What's this mean to you? It's historical. It's a miracle. It speaks to our players, it speaks to our staff. We were six and five with two quad four losses at Christmas. And the sacrifices that the wives make children make that our players have made the work our staff has done Texas A&M has never won 15 conference games so I don't know what to say other than I'm thankful well Texas A&M basketball is on top of the world right now my man you're responsible for that it's good to see you you're my hero I've always had great respect for you Sorry, I don't know what to say. Nah. Really emotional. Tell me about these guys holding this team down. Defensively, it was a clinic today. I, th I thought our plan was right. I thought the staff put together the best plan to play against one of the best offenses in the country. For sure, the fastest offense. They're just so talented. And I thought when we could get past the first 12 seconds and settle in and get our defense set, we were so much better. And that ball is grooming up the floor, and we can't ever get set. We struggled. And the thing that I think made it such a game is too many times we didn't finish with a defensive rebound. And so we, we we couldn't finish. And then when we would get stops with a rebound, it leads to good things for us offensively. Well, thanks from all of us that got to watch this game today. Congratulations. Buddy. I think it's the first time in uh, six years that CBS has been here. So to have you and Nestler on the call, we feel grateful. Well, we're proud good of you, to see you. Congrats. What a finish from Texas A&M. Slow starts, finally catching up with the second-ranked team in the country. Fourth straight game, they trail at the half. And finally, after being down by double digits, couldn't make the comeback this time around in College Station, Texas. With more on the game, let's toss it out to the guys who called it on CBS. Texas A&M takes down the number two team in the country on their home floor in front of a sellout crowd today, 67-61. Brad Nestler with Jay Wright with a recap of the Aggies and the Crimson Tide. A uh, double-digit lead at halftime for Texas A&M. Alabama fought back. We had five ties in the second half. They finally got over the hump, and then the Aggies took over. Great combination of defense, free throw shooting, and two great guards. Ah, you're, you're so right. The defense was so impressive, and it was a – it was a complex game plan that they kept switching up looks for Alabama, and it took them it took them out of their aggressiveness and their ability to get to the foul line, Texas A&M, at the end of the game. Right. How many possessions in a row did yeah. you talk about at the end where Wade Wade Taylor gets himself to the foul line? Or Radford. Roots Radford gets himself to the foul line, and they knock him out. 
Brandon Miller was Brandon Miller today, but nothing really special. They were really strong on him. He did finish with a double double 19 and 10. Dexter Dennis did a great job on him. Garcia did a great job on him. He was still tough and he never relented. Still found his threes. Quinterly came in and tried to get it going which, like he's done a number of games. But the real answer was Wade Taylor. We talked about him in the beginning as, as probably the best point guard and maybe one of the best players in the right. SEC. And he had a career high game today of 28 points to lead them in scoring 28 and 21. So 49 of the 67 points came from the backcourt of the Aggies and the free throw shooting sensational 27 out of 28. Texas A&M, an upset of Alabama. They're the top two seeds, though, in Nashville this week in the SEC tournament. Thanks for watching, everybody. For Jay Wright, Brad Nessler, saying so long from College Station. It was a battle of the top two seeds in the upcoming SEC tournament, and this won't change that positioning, but it's certainly an upset in College Station. As 24th-ranked Texas A&M beats number two Alabama, 67 61 and what a win for the for the Aggies a six point win Wade Taylor led the way with 28 points Brandon Miller for Alabama had 19 before fouling out with just under two minutes to play and what was then a four point game turned into a six point victory for the A&M Aggies. And for more on Alabama's loss to Texas A&M, we welcome in Matt Norlander, CBS Sports Senior College Basketball Writer. How did A&M pull off the upset at home? I think it was the, the biggest reason why was the way that Buzz Williams and his coaching staff schemed this game. They really went at Miller early and often. They almost, they almost went for broke. You know, they were, they were going to say, we're not going to allow Brandon Miller to beat us in this game. And guess what? He didn't. He fouled out late. was 2 of 12 from three-point range. He did score, but it was an ugly game shooting-wise. Not from the foul line, which was incredible. We'll get to that in a second. But, you know, Bama shot 33%. A&M shot 34%. Buzz Williams' team won this game the way that it wanted to win the game. It took Miller out of his rhythm. And without him, we saw a little bit of why. Alabama is still a very, very good team. Mm -hmm. But we see why, once we get to the tournament, Alabama is not exactly a sure thing to just waltz through the bracket and get to a final. Well, that's the other thing that a loss does. Is it allows you to take a bigger picture look. And in their last several games, the Crimson Tide have struggled. Now, they've won four straight games, but they needed overtime a couple times. They got two-point wins. How fragile are the Crimson Tide as a projected number one seed heading towards the tournament? Uh, you mean in terms of if, if their one seed is is safe? Yeah, well, think, either that or as a, a favored team going up I, against I, underdogs. I think both of those. So from a one seed perspective, Alabama would have to lose his first SEC tournament game, and then we'll see. I just don't see it falling off the one line. But to its overall fragility going into the going into postseason play here, there is something to be said for that. And also, Bama today had eight. It was induced into 18 turnovers. That's significant <laughs> you can't have that against high level opponents so yeah if you want to look at what Alabama is doing and frankly all of the noise around the program you can't tell me that's not at least something of a factor with all of this with the Brandon Miller and Jaden Bradley story and how they continue to play and and the noise surrounding them uh, yes Alabama does appear to be vulnerable it's not just a loss here the loss is totally understandable Texas A&M this is what we call a, a seed line boost kind of a win you know A&M six seed seven seed they're clearly in that in that uh in that territory, and this is a great sign for them. For, for Alabama, the past couple of weeks here, they've been able to get those wins, as you mentioned, but they have been they have been pushed, and we'll see if they benefit from a reset. But again, every single venue Alabama goes into will be hostile territory, considering the story that has tracked that program for the past couple of weeks. Let's talk about AM for a second. Big win, obviously. First time in school history. They beat a one or two ranked team in the nation. They were 0 for 16 coming into this game. How big of a win for AM is this? Significant. I think on, on a certain level, we're now in March. And so you beat Alabama, you beat a highly ranked team. 
for those that are really starting to, to key into college hoops, this is the kind of win where it's like, oh, okay, I don't know too much about this A&M team. How good are they? I tell you what, Wade Taylor the fourth was a stud, elite level point guard, and was incredible. Didn't miss a foul shot. Amazing from the field today. He was the best player on the floor. And when you have a point guard who is as experienced, as composed, as heady as Wade Taylor, then you're really going to give yourself a chance at winning multiple games in the NCAA tournament. a and has been an intriguing team in terms of overall projection into the field because Buzz Williams, after being the first team left out of the field a year ago, didn't schedule well in the non-conference. And so a and has had to make up a ton of ground in the SEC. It has. It's going to finish one game behind Alabama in the SEC standings. But I do think this is a seed line boost. So if you want to say Bama was a seven, I think it's a six. And, and it can even get higher with this, Russ. Teams for real and most wins in the regular season for AM since 2016 because of this W. Look out for the Aggies in the SEC tournament. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.